East Coast, and I'm assuming that's 1 p.m. on the West Coast. Uh, so just want to uh, thank everybody for joining us today. Um, we're going to have a, uh, a fairly far-reaching iPad conversation for the next hour or so. Uh, but before we get started, I just wanted to go over a couple of uh, very brief technical things and sort of infrastructure things. Um, the interview itself will take up maybe the first 30, 35 minutes, somewhere in there. We want to make it as uh, conversational as possible for everybody. So please chime in with questions through the chat area. We're going to be monitoring that as we go along. I may weave some of those in as we go on, but we'll also have plenty of time at the end uh, for, for audience questions. Um, our hashtag for the event is IPADORM. That's I-P-A-D-O-R-M. So feel free to tweet on that if you want. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce our, our guests today. Um, I'm joined by Adam Flaherty, contributing writer at Make Online. Adam, if you want to wait. There he is. Hello, everybody. Uh, Dam there he is. Uh, I'm also joined by Damien Stolarz, author of iPhone Hacks. Damien. There he is. Hello. And finally, Adam Angst, publisher of Tidbits. Great. OK. So first question I had in Adam Angst, I'm going to shoot this at you to begin with, but uh, after he answers, uh, the, the other guy should definitely chime in with this. Um, Do I have to get it right? The first thing that <laughs> you, you absolutely have to get it right. If, you, if you're wrong, you'll, be, you'll get a big X. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my. Um, the, uh, right, the, the first question I have for you was what, was, what was the first thought that went through your mind when you first got your hands on the iPad? What was your very first impression? Very first impression. Um, shiny. <laughs> it's. I mean, it was. It, looking at the iPad for the very first time, I mean, you're struck, of course, by the fact that it looks like an iPhone or an iPod Touch scaled up. But then, as soon as you turn it on and and do even the first couple of things, you realize that it's it's qualitatively different in some ways. Uh, I, uh, Ken Case of the Omni Group made made the point that um, size matters. You know that it's 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 you can't you don't say that a swimming pool is just a scaled up bathtub. You do very different things in them, and that became obvious just instantly um, on the iPad as soon as I you know turned it on and did one or two things. Okay, uh, Adam Flaherty, what did you think? Your first impression? Oh, boy. Um, well, you know I read about it uh, uh, intensely before I went and bought it, and I was I was a little apprehensive. I mean, you know, I thought it was, oh, it's going to miss a few features, and well, when I got to the store, man, it, it was great. It was, it was, it was exactly what I thought it would, it, it wasn't, you know. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it was, it was, it was like seeing the iPhone for the first time. It was that magical. Damien, how about you? Um, well, it's funny because I'm, I'm watching the chat. So my first thought was, how well will this read PDFs? So <laughs> I immediately grabbed the iPhone. I, 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 um, the, the day the Kindle, the large, large form Amazon Kindle DX came out, I bought it and sold it on Craigslist at a $50 loss a, a week later. And the reason is I put a 1,000-page PDF for my job on it, and I clicked Next Page, and I waited five seconds. Um, I got this yeah. one, um, you know, I looked around for a PDF solution, um, you know, here's, here's iPhone hacks, you know, and it's like, this is responsive, you know, this is my own book, and I, I put it on here, and if I want to, you know, refer to it, it's, it works instantly. So this was like the yeah. clincher for me. It was like, give me a portable PDF reader that doesn't suck and turn black every time I turn a page, and uh, it's just night and day. <laughs> sure. So. You know, that, just sort of bringing up that point about the horsepower, um, that was something that I that I tested pretty quickly too. And uh, I mentioned this in an answers piece that we po we posted recently. Um, I use VNC all the time in my, in my house, and um, why? But I do. And you know, <laughs> the iPod Touch, that I've got, I know it's ridiculous, but the iPod Touch that I've got technically could do it, but it just it was a horrible experience, right? This is yeah. I mean the the iPad can can handle it. Easily, and that was that was sort of my own uh, my own horsepower test the, the first time I got it. Um, what about? There's been a lot out there about the weight and the physicality of, of the actual device. Were you surprised at all by how how heavy it is? And anyone 
feel yes. rated. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's very solid, it's um, which is both good and bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it very. It it feels it, it's well balanced. It feels right. So when you when you hold it, it doesn't feel tippy or anything like that. But at the same time, you're not going to spend a lot of time holding it in your hands outstretched. It's particularly with one hand, it's a little heavy. And so I think there's going to be a lot of people, you know, sitting with their knees up and, you know, and doing things like this so you don't have right. to support the full weight. And, you know, I don't know how much of that I Apple actually can control. There's just a certain amount of weight to glass and aluminum. And uh, if they want the, the stiffness and they want to have that kind of a screen, they may not be able to avoid it. Sure. Damien, how about you? Did you have any thoughts about the, the weight of the thing? Yeah, it's heavier, and everyone I hand it to, you know, to play with, uh, says, "Whoa, it's heavy," and um, you know, it is. Um, I joked with somebody this morning; it's lighter than the Library of Congress. Um, you know, the amount of books and stuff I have on it. it to get this 10, 11, 12-hour battery life, you have to stick batteries in it. And batteries store energy, and energy's dense when you store it. So, I mean, I forgive them, but yes, it is. You know, like you give it to the kid, and the kid's like, "Whoa, okay," you know, right. heavy little object. Um, you know, I don't know how to get around that, and I'm not, I'm not complaining, but it is, it's more than you'd think. Yeah, it's deceptive. It, it, it looks uh, a lot lighter than it is. One thing that uh, yeah, someone just commented in the... Someone just commented in the in the chat. It's lighter than a book that you're holding, um, which is true. But it's a little slippery. Um, it's not. I mean, a book a book yeah. has more more tactile. You, you're not your hand doesn't slip off the sides of it in the same way, and you're not as worried about putting your fingers on it. Yeah, I ordered that, but it didn't hasn't come yet. So, but I mean, no, I think yeah, that's actually absolutely. an important point. That's going to be an, oh, yeah. a, a useful thing. Oh yeah, from, from an industrial design standpoint, um, it's 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 made to be put in a case. Um, one thing I, yeah. I don't like about it is the the hard edge. Um, it's 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 a little stiff. Yeah. They could have rounded it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, as soon as with, I held it for the first time, like the case should have come with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the forty dollars surcharge is a little wow, but. Um, I wouldn't hold this thing without a case just because of protection, you know, being able to cover the face. I think if I had one, which I will eventually, just sitting around in the living room on the coffee table, I might have that one, you know, in its nakedness, but generally sure. I would I would use a case <laughs> yeah. for the, the, the Ooh. naked iPad. The not safe for work iPad. Apple won't allow that. Right, right. <laughs> it doesn't sit you have to put something under it when you when you set it on a table. You you yeah. you have to put something under it. It or, rocks a little. Or it's just you know you, you can, it, it rocks a little. Yeah, you, you'll scratch yeah, it true. up. It's got a yeah. right. It's got a curve to it on the back. The other thing um, that's yeah, that, when I first held it, it I, I was, go ahead, Adam, please. I said the other thing that's, that you don't quite t can't can't quite figure out sometimes is is that when you're trying to type on it, how do you set it? Because if it's flat, your your hands are at kind of a weird angle, and okay, if your hands are kind of a weird angle, and if you are you know on your knee, you're holding it with one hand. It's you know it remains to be seen exactly how people are going to interact with it as an object, which is really different from interacting with the UI. Right. Now that's a good point. Um, I figured out very quickly why it's got the uh, roughly one inch. Uh, frame around it too. It's when you're when you're holding that thing, you yeah. really gotta get a good grip on it, especially if you're in the in the uh, the books. Uh, you'd be flipping pages too too often otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah, no question. Now there was I mean there was an insane amount of pre release chatter, more than I've seen in, in a long time. And some of us actually contributed to that pre release chatter. Um, you know, based off of that stuff, is there a feature that you were looking forward to that has either uh, been a it matched your expectation, or is there one uh, that you were looking forward to that has not matched your expectation? And Adam Flaherty, I'll, we'll start with you. Um, something that didn't match my expectations. Um, no, actually, it, uh, it's it's performing pretty much how I th I thought it would. Um, yeah, I really I really can add to that. It's 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 a big it's a big iPod Touch. Right, Damien, how about you? Um, most of my complaints center around, um, and I'm not one of the complainers, but most of the things that are missing for me are the same things that we're missing um, that are probably going to be addressed Thursday. So, um, 
you know, my work kind of uses Skype as our time clock. So if I'm not on Skype, so my laptop would be logged into Skype. I can't, you know, run this, run Skype, expect it to keep me logged in while I go do productivity. So just silly little things like that that I'm assuming Apple is going to address in its, in its own sweet time. Um, you know, I have the same problems. Similarly, I'm noticing, I mean, I'm using things for project management. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was using on the, the MacBook, about, about since the release, I've gone through all the programs I use and made sure that they had an iPad counterpart coming up. So um, what I'm finding is uh, you can't click URLs in some of the iPad versions. So there's just, until they work out the, oh, and the, the biggest thing is where do I save my files? So, you know, I load up all my PDFs. I can do that through iTunes, but I'm still in clunky land. I feel like when I first got the Kindle, it was like, okay, we'll send you the stuff you buy, but you have to sync for the rest. Well, my iPad shouldn't be like that, but it is. So I have to plug my iPad into my computer to load my PDFs up. It's not just seamless file sharing, and there's, there's still no concept of a file system. So I downloaded it's, Mac iWorks thinking, oh, I'm going to be able to edit my files. No, it's, you know, complicated app by app, non, non-uniform across apps. So that, those are my general complaints, um, sure. it's, it's which I know Apple's solving, but they're just solving them too slow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one. One thing, uh, Damien, uh, we were talking about this a little bit beforehand, but uh, for PDFs, I strongly recommend you get Good Reader uh, Tablet Edition. It's it, it it's simply an astonishing PDF reader, and it supports things like PDF links and bookmarks, um, as well as providing uh, 17 different ways to get files on into Good Reader on the iPad from just about anywhere. So that said, it's a um, good reader. yeah, Good Reader, fabulous little program. Um, the thing that, that I would like to say, actually, that, that, that I was most surprised by, not having actually laid hands on one at the intro, um, and um, yeah, here's good reader, um, but, but the, just the level to which the iPad, it's, uh, and I wrote about this just recently, that, that it's a blank slate, that it becomes what app you're running. So when you're using a computer, you know you're using the computer, that there's no question about that. And, and there's always this computer, this keyboard, this, the, the mouse, the, the monitors, all of it separating you from what you're doing. With the iPad, because it's nothing but screen, and the screen's pretty big, and you're manipulating things directly, when you're using a weather application, it's a weather machine. When you're sure. you know, using a calculator, it's a calculator. And that's, oh, that's yeah. kind of a big deal. And the thing that I actually find to be the most disappointing, therefore, is old apps. That when you look at something old, uh, let me see if I can grab, grab something little here. Um, oops, that's been updated. It's a, it's um, a, it's a synthesizer. I mean, when, right. <laughs> when, but when you, when, you look at an old, when you look at an old app, look, there it is in 1x mode. And you can't no. see this, but, but once you bump it up to 2x mode, it's fuzzy. The, the magic disappears on old apps. And I found that really kind of interesting because it, initially I thought, wow, 150,000 apps are going to work right away. That's fabulous. But they don't. You, you run an old app and you think, get me the new one and get it to me now. Right. Yep. Yeah, that, that actually, that, I, I noticed from the very get-go that even the icons for the older apps are a yeah. little fuzzier than, yeah. than the, uh, the iPad-centric ones, which to me, you know, that, that feels like a little bit of a shot across the bow, right? Where, <laughs> hey, developers, yeah. wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you might want to uh, get on this with all these pretty apps. Oh, that's exactly what oh, it was. Oh, it's, 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 it's App Store Gold Rush 2.0, man. It's, it's right. going to be big. Yeah. Uh, and were you what surprised Apple did by... is they also addressed the pricing, uh, just, just on that last note. Um, Sure. There's been so much complaint about uh, race to the bottom, 99 cent apps. Uh, the iPad, now that it's got a large enough screen, you're going to have users, if you think about it, they're all used to buying audio for 99 cents, and then they wanted their apps for 99 cents. Now that you've got a slate, they can reintroduce an entirely new price point, 12.99, 9.99, and you already see apps. And just psychologically, when I was buying apps for this, oh, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, it didn't, it didn't, whereas when you're buying $12 or $30, which I spent for the remote access on my iPod, I was like, I, iPad Touch, I was like, oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think size matters. the price point is the good thing that Apple has done. Yeah. Right, that's true. That's true, yeah. 
Go ahead. Uh, nine nine ninety nine still uh, in no, black. Yeah. <laughs> um, were you guys surprised by any uh, uh, opening day app omissions? I mean, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, Facebook. Oh, the for Times. Example, the Times that. app was. Uh, you know, it. The, the, I was. I was kind of disappointed with the New York Times app. I thought they could have done right. better. The the editor's Honestly, app that they did. Yeah. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. I'm not too too put out by that because we know for a fact that you know a handful of developers at most actually had hardware, and I talked to a number of developers who said it was really really hard to develop on the iPad simulator because particularly with anything more than just a you know like scrolling some scrolling list of text, you couldn't tell what it felt like. Um, the Omni guys were demoing OmniGraffle for me on the simulator you know on Friday before it, you know, before it came out. And they actually said, we don't know how this is going to work in, in, in the real world because we don't have one yet. You know, that's got to yeah. be a really uncomfortable position as a developer. But, you know, I expect we'll see updates coming out, you know, like that now. Um, <clears throat> how, do you, how do you guys think you'll be using the, uh, the iPad? Uh, Damien, what, what is your use case right now? So for me, uh, I, I live in Los Angeles, and I commute to San Francisco once a week for two days. So for me, it's a no-brainer um, that I'm going to be using this instead of my laptop on the plane, on the BART, on all the, you know, the, the long four-hour commute I do. Um, in addition, um, I guess Raven Zachary has already tweeted that uh, he went through without taking it out. So he didn't have to take it out. He left it in his bag. It went through. Home. Now, that may vary by yeah. airport, but, but mm. early reports are that it is, a, uh, it is not a laptop. So uh, right. I know that sounds trivial, but for somebody who flies a lot, uh, you know, it's, it's the less I have to think that I can just throw my bag on the uh, that. But as far as productivity, um, I'm going to try and do everything on it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a very uh, nomadic um, worker. I read and read and read, and then I write reports. That's like what I do for my day job. And uh, this has a faster web browser than my 17-inch MacBook Pro. Like I can surf faster because that's all it's doing, and it looks great, and it's crisper, and it has a better screen. They've taken that really nice iPod screen and blown it up. So I think this is actually a better screen than my MacBook. I mean, it's sunlight readable, et cetera, et cetera. So um, like I said, I've been through the Kindle. I wanted to work completely transform my workflow to Kindle because like I do 90% reading and then 10% writing on what I've read. Useless. This thing, completely there. Um, and once Apple solves the silliness of how you having to run an app and sync files to it, you know, the biggest thing for me is a lot of times I have to um, look up things on the Internet that result in PDFs that I then want to save to disk and read. And right now the iPad makes that a little difficult. I'm finding workarounds, but I shouldn't have to find workarounds. So, but I'm going to use it for right. absorbing knowledge, which is like what I have to do all the time. Huh. Adam Flaherty, what, what are you going to use it for? Oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I have to use it too. I think right. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna probably do the same thing. It. I'll use it for reading a lot. Um, <laughs> and I, I actually bought it for my you'll, wife. You'll play endless she'll, she'll be using game, it. But in double time. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. I'll. I'll be. Um. It's. It's all about um. Plants versus zombies for me. Really. <laughs> right. And and my new Korg uh, synthesizer. <laughs> and no, it's it's Absolutely. a it's a big it's a big iPod, man. It's I mean, what do you use your iPod for? I mean, it's you know what? I probably won't be listening to music on it. It's really not. It's not handy to you know. You're not going to put it in your pocket. But sure. um, you know, it, I don't I don't. It's 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 a consumption device. You're not you're not going to really produce much except for I mean I think I think it's going to to be um really, really um, a big hit with um, people that are making music, music producers uh, and DJs. Yeah, I think, I think so. it'll replace, it'll replace um, uh, turntables, you know, if, if everyone's, if, yeah, if, you put if it all, up, all your music is You put it on the digital. table and you spin it really fast. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen it. There's, a, there's an app Scratching. out there with, with, uh, with the turntable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, or to, or recording or recording if you're if you're if you're um, recording music, uh, the A track. There's an A track uh, setup. You know, and, and and it's a it's a nice big interface. Um, 
it's it's going to replace the laptop on on the stage. I think I'm I'm actually I'm sure of it. You know, people who do live music, it's going to be a big win. <clears throat> you could have you'll have all you, you know all the rack mounted uh, equipment. That's that's going to go away. It'll be all, all in right. your your iPad. Uh, Adam, thanks. What what do you plan on using it for? Well, uh, unlike Damien, I, I don't go anywhere, basically, ever. I work out of my house. <laughs> and so um, we have, you know, a gazillion Macs and, you know, iPhones and iPod Touches and all that kind of lying around already. And so what I'm kind of expecting to see it used for um, is two big things. One is reading, um, mostly probably leisure reading, honestly, not that there's anything wrong with it for doing kind of professional web surfing or reading PDFs or whatnot. But a lot of times when I'm doing that, I need to be writing at the same time. And so, you know, I'll have something up in one monitor and then something up on the other monitor and, and be able to go back and forth. So I don't think I'll really be doing too much of that on the iPad, at least initially, because I'm so used to it. But um, what I expect is, you know, any kind of books that I'm reading, I, you know, there's a heck of a lot out there that, uh, you know, I'm a little embarrassed that I haven't read, you know, all of Mark Twain, uh, things like that, that, you know, are such an easy... Uh, easy thing to do on the iPad and makes it, you know, I've never gotten around to going around and getting Huck Finn out of the library. So I'm going to go and go and, you know, and read it online. Um, the other thing that I actually anticipate using it for a lot uh, with quotes around the using is having it as a digital picture frame. That when it's not actually doing anything, uh -oh. I want it sitting around showing me pretty pictures. And there's a neat app called Art Authority, which uh, which goes out and and downloads um, pictures from websites of you know the greatest artworks in history. And um, I'm having uh, discussions with the developer right now because you know right now you have to sort of interact with it a little bit too much. I was like, no, no, I want to see all the great works of art throughout history, in order or randomized, and just have it run. You know, don't make me don't make me touch it all the time. And that way, when I'm not using it, it's a it's a picture frame. You know, the picture frames cost a lot these days, and they're still not that good. So the iPad's a much better picture frame than anything out there. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> have you noticed that, I assume that all of you have either owned an iPhone or used an iPhone. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. So given that, do you feel that there are any aspects between the two different devices where there's a, there's a huge discrepancy? I mean, are you, you know, somebody asked a question about the keyboard, for example. Um, how do you see those two devices differing and perhaps even relating? And uh, Adam Flaherty, let's start with you. Oh, um, I'll pass. <laughs> the cir really? circle gets the square, right? You know, yeah, life, yeah. Lifeline on that one? <laughs> Right, yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, Adam, Adam Hanks, do you have any? Uh, no. <laughs> Wait, I mean, okay, I'll take it. Okay, if no one else is going to answer, I'll talk Thank about that. Right, Adam, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, this, this sort of gets back to what I was saying before about the iPad becoming its app. And that doesn't happen with the iPhone. I mean, I love my iPhone. I, I use it all the time. I don't use it much as a phone, actually, because I'm not a big phone person. Um, it's always in my pocket. It's, you know, it's a clock and all that sort of thing. But even though I'm not a phone person, I always think of it as a phone. I always, always think, ah, the iPhone is in my pocket, and therefore, you know, I, I just deal with it that way. I, the iPad feels different because of that not being a phone. Um, that I'm not going to use it for those kind of purposes. And so in some ways that's good because it frees it up to be something that I would never really quite consider uh, on the iPhone. And, and, and again, that simple size difference, you know, if you're going to use a diagramming tool or, or, or doing photo manipulation or something like that, the size makes a huge, huge difference. So I think there, there, there really are going to be complementary uses for quite some time. Um, no one's going to be replacing an iPhone or an iPod Touch with an iPad, certainly, if, if that's um, something that anyone was wondering about. They're, they're, just, they're just separate. Right, right. Um, because I know it's going to come up again and again. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the keyboard? Damien, I, I noticed that you posted something in the chat that said you're, you're pretty good on the keyboard. Do you feel like uh, you can use it for, for some pretty serious text entry? Oh, fantastic. See, the thing is, um, so you everyone's already been retrained on the I, iPhone. 
So we've all gotten almost up to BlackBerry speed on the iPhone. This is like 80% of a desktop keyboard. And so it completely removes the rest of your, um, oh, keyboard, you know, type problems. Plus, you can get a keyboard for it. Um, I've been using it with the, you know, with the little uh, book-shaped um, case, and I, I don't even bother to type on that because I can hunt and peck with two fingers far faster than I ever could on any device. I have, I, you know, my hands are kind of big, and, and uh, yet on this, it totally works. Plus, it auto-corrects, so the auto-correction um, is there. And you don't have autocorrection on a desktop. So it's autocorrecting anytime you, and it's not, you know, the lame word autocorrection. So the keyboard eliminates, and so much of what you do on web surfing is clicking links, and then you jump over into a Twitter post, 140 characters. Like, there's so much workflow that this keyboard is utterly sufficient for. And then if you have to sit down and write, it's still sufficient. And then if you know that you're going to have to do production writing, like I'm, I'm, I'm working on another book, um, I can drag the keyboard along and type, you know, with that, and that can be in my bag, and I only have to pull it out if I need, and it's a tiny Bluetooth keyboard. So, it's um, this completely solves the keyboard problem. In, in my mind, it's it's done. It, it, this is solved. Right, Adam Angst, what what do you think? Uh, I'm not a I'm not a big uh, not being a big mobile person. Uh, my my typing speed on the iPhone is still pretty miserable, and I. Still find it pretty awkward to type on the iPad. I don't have the little case yet. Mine didn't come, but I do think you're going to need some way of putting it up so you can get two hands on it for any kind of um, any kind of speed on the glass keyboard. Uh, for me, the you know I imagine if I'm going to be using it for anything real, I'll be typing on a on a Bluetooth keyboard, which is also pretty small. Honestly, it's smaller than I I don't normally use a Bluetooth keyboard, and and so I think I'll be getting a little bit getting used to. But that said. Uh, you know, I think Damien's right. The keyboard issue has gone away. Either you'll get better at the glass one, or you'll use a Bluetooth one, and it's not a problem. Yep, yep, I, I agree with that. Um, it's for me. I have big hands, and um, it's yeah. It's either it's either um, too small uh, in port in landscape mode. It's it's actually too small for me to to type on, um, or uh, it's too big. Um, I. You know, if if I if I have it uh, in portrait mode, and I'm trying to type, I'm trying to thumb type, and it's just a little awkward. Yeah. But um, you know, right. hunt and peck, you can get by, and and yeah, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard. Big deal. Yeah, I I found that the mistake I made was automatically thinking that I could I could type with it like I usually type, and it's just you, you can't. You know, I can't. I, I'm I'm pretty fast on a regular keyboard. That's like a and floating you, touch type. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. You have to adapt. Oh. Right. Right. I'm. I, I, That's I actually I, the, the the fastest. I I'm pretty I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm I, I touch type. Um, I am the fastest on a mobile device with an iPhone. I can type um, on an iPhone way faster than a BlackBerry or any any other physical keyboard I've tried on a mobile device. Um, the 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 auto correction is is fantastic. Um, on this, it's it's a little cumbersome. I really, you know, I, I it's you know, it's hunt and peck. Right. There's also right. some think, oddities yeah, with the glass keyboard. As soon as you want an apostrophe, for instance, you have to. You're constantly yeah. making that decision of, ooh, do I let the auto correct get it for me, or do I need to get it because <laughs> you know. Weir is also were, and you know all those little little iffy things there. So I, you know, honestly, that's really why I'm probably going to use a Bluetooth keyboard for anything serious because I don't want to think about what the autocorrection is going to do um, all the time. Right. And it the, is uh, nice that you have the option of a Bluetooth keyboard. Yeah, that is that actually that is a great option, and that it's it, it's fairly seamless with that. I mean, I haven't had any issues with the Bluetooth keyboard. What, what one thing that one thing that it brings to mind is well, how come we don't have a Bluetooth Keyboard for yeah. for our iPhones, you know it's well, I, actually yeah yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I want to look back to right that. here. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is just a silly question. That's, that is uh, a good if, point. If you understand now. You're right. You're right. Eh? <laughs> because okay, then we wouldn't so, uh, buy it. So, so, uh, sure, but no, it's true. Sure. I mean, the Bluetooth no, it, on the iPhone would be great. So easy to read if you understand them. Yeah, but but Apple is so easy to read if you understand them. And yeah. um, we're actually in the oh, the I. Um, one of my companies makes hardware accessories for these. And not violating our indie or anything, if you say, hey, Apple, why haven't you done this obvious thing that there's market demand for, and they stare at you blankly, it means they have a plan. You know, and so it, it's, it, it, 
It's like, <laughs> Apple, why won't you make a keyboard for this little thing? And it's like, well, you know, and so, I don't know, um, right now... We never I thought of that. Bought, yeah, okay, wow. Thanks for bringing that up. So, yeah, it's... If, you, if six months goes by and nobody comes out with one, it means that Apple's kind of gone, mm, no, not so much. Um, would it still be nice? And sure. then okay, then, now you then, can buy then a why, then, keyboard from then, Apple. But it won't work. What about right cameras? Now. I mean, that, that, that makes... That bri that brings up all you know all the missing features that everyone's expecting. Where's the camera? Where's the GPS? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna run that camera app. <laughs> um, there's an app I ran earlier yes, called yeah, this Camera is... A and Camera B. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Thank you for the setup. <laughs> this is um, so this is our, our big ball. hack for today. I had and <laughs> as soon as they boot <laughs> up, I get, basically it uses your iPhone. <laughs> As a camera for your iPad, you keep talking while I boot these up. They they find each other over. Right, we'll, we'll wait a second. <laughs> so because this is so this is a bit of a force. I think the, segue, the why but, they didn't uh, build a camera well. into the iPad is actually. I mean, it does become it a little bit clearer. Also, once you hold it, the 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 physicality of it is it's unclear how you would get it to be hold it still enough, or whether it be front or back. And so, you know, I think what Damien's showing here is pretty darn neat for real use. Well, it's it's also showing off the the you know uh, the functionality. You know, we're 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 going to be using this a lot differently than we than we have any other device. It's it's um it's an extension. It's your it's your second screen. It's your control interface. Um, you know, the the iPhone gave you this this programmable remote. This is a bigger version of that. You can do more with it. You can have you know, more of an interface, and it just, you know, yeah, whatever you put up, whatever, whatever, whatever's running, whatever that app is, that's what you that's what the device is. It's, Amy, what it's is a synthesizer. Here, I'm going to use it questions. for conferencing. So now we have a conferencing <laughs> solution. I, I want to show everyone, someone, could, but this is the silly thing, someone could totally write this app now. So there's your video conference. Sure. You stick your iPod backwards on your iPad, or your, 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 your iPhone, and then you use Bluetooth to talk between the two of them. So I mean, there's there's so many options for getting the camera over. And and this app, you can type a, you can press a button on the screen and it takes the picture from over there. So I think these things are going to be solved by smart application developers. Sure. Hey, Damien, oh, that is, would be really that fun with multiple phones. Hmm? You create a wormhole. <laughs> yeah, that's what would happen. Yeah. Uh, Damien, what is what is the name of that app? You're going to cross the beams. Don't Damien. cross the beams. Oh sure, camera. Called camera A and camera B. It's it's a it's a Japanese app, and uh, camera B goes on your iPhone, and camera A goes on your iPad. Right. And camera B is free. Uh, how but camera A costs money. <laughs> That's how they get you, huh? <laughs> right. Could you have right. multiple camera Bs? Not yet, but I I really anticipate someone doing an iPad app where uh, over bonjour. Or, or you know where you have if you go to a concert and you had ten people with iPhones all holding up at different angles and then you could use your iPad to look oh I want to tune into camera three camera four camera five camera six sure. so I mean they, these are the sorts um, it's all a few years ago there was the you know the shared typing programs well now there should be the shared video type programs and I think you're going right. to get this Seems with like Wi-Fi cameras yeah, um, I have these sunglasses actually... that have a built-in camera here, and I want that on my iPad. I should be able to carry around and just whatever I'm looking at, you know, and, and you'll have should better make... augmented reality type tricks. Should right. make chat roulette interesting. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's, let, let's move on from that, then. Um, Did we handle all the questions I know over on Note 3? Uh, I'm actually, we're looping some of those back in. Uh, one of the big ones okay, is uh, the impact of, of, of no flash on the iPad. Um, Adam Manx, do you think that that's a, a, a major issue, or is it something that we've already been trained I can't hear you uh, to, to not deal with, given the iPhone? Oh, can you hear me okay now? I can hear you. No. Nope. All right, Adam no, Flaherty. We'll Adam. We'll you, try to tell it tell out. Adam, and he can Adam he Flaherty, can repeat. What do you think about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. What, Adam Flaherty. Uh, uh, what do I think about the lack of what flash? About flash? Yeah, <laughs> the lack of flash. Um. I don't think it's really going to be that big of a deal. Uh, you know, Adobe's 
going to make it so that you can you know build an app in Flash. Um, they've already demoed that, and it, it works pretty well. But I, I don't think it's um, it's really going to be that that much of an issue not having Flash yeah. on the iPad. Um, people will get by with HTML5, and uh, <coughs> yeah. Damien, I, I tend you? to agree that, that, that so much of what's Flash. flash conversation. <laughs> sorry, keep talking over. Oh, yeah, I just say that the, the flash the flash is just such a non-issue in so many ways that that people who do video in Flash aren't Flash users. They're video users. They want to be pushing their video out. They don't really care what the technology is. And, you know, you can go into why Apple's doing it, why, why Apple's not doing it. It doesn't really matter. The fact is, is if these people want their video to be seen on the iPhone, they'll make it seen on the iPhone via HTML5 or via, via an app. And most of the rest of the uses of Flash that you see out there are things like, well, it, most of the real uses, not the you know silly stuff that advertising. Most of the real uses, you know, they're, they're silly little games and, and, and stuff like that that people can do in a real app where it'll be a much better interface, a much better user experience. So, uh, you know, I have to say... Charge for it. Yeah, they'll charge for it. And, you know, it's unclear if Flash would even make sense in a multi-touch interface. It's not designed for multi-touch. So, you know, I, I, just, I have no trouble, well, frankly, I just never get worked up about Flash not being on the iPhone. You know, every now and then I see the little plug-in, and, you know, it's never hurt my user experience. Um, I, I noticed so, that and and I just little... wanted to add one thing to the, uh, to the, to the Flash conversation. So... The thing with Flash, that's a good point. There's everyone who uses Flash for video, and it's entirely sensible on a technical basis to go, well, we have an MPEG-4 chip on this device. We don't have a Flash chip, so your video should be playing an MPEG-4. So that's one very reasonable argument. The other thing is it's, it's, a ten, it's the 2010 browser war, and you know there's going to be some casualties. There are going to be some old Flash apps um, and some current Flash apps, but Bright Cove over the weekend is like, oh, yeah, our video now works. Every major video site, just like YouTube did, is going to go, you know what, here's our MPEG-4 version. MPEG-4 happens to be a standard. And so, you know, that's all the video. And then the rest of it, Apple doesn't want low performance. Er, 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 er. And Steve Jobs even, like, threw it out. He's like, oh, I wish, it, three years ago, he actually threw an open comment, wow, I wish there was something between Flash and Flash Lite. Well, Adobe didn't respond. So he, he actually opened the door to, hey, can you guys give me something in the middle? They didn't respond with something in the middle, and they're not on the platform. So you can, you can read between the lines on it, but I just know, you know, it, if there's some community site that you have to use, but I mean, you know, what does everyone use? They use Facebook. Is Facebook Flash? No. And you can go down the list. So I, I just don't, everyone who's going, taking an attitude of like, oh, Flash is needed, it, it's just not really needed. We're using Flash right now. Uh, I noticed that there's an <laughs> audio problem. So I'm yeah, that's working really well for us. <laughs> that's that's why I'm having an audio problem. <laughs> right, but this this what uh, uh, um, since there was an this, audio problem, this, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause my video. Okay, um, I I think um, like for instance this this particular app that we're using right now uses Flash heavily. Um, it could very easily be an app. It's it doesn't have to live within a browser. Yeah. Um, it's 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 not needed. Um, it's it's nice that that I can go to it. I could just pop in a URL and hey, here I am. Um, but you could easily download an app if you need to. Yeah. What about the uh, the other major criticism, the, the the lack of multitasking? Do you think it's an issue? An issue? Um, I do. I personally think it's a it's a big deal. Um, mainly because I've deal. been using a Nexus One for for the last uh, couple of months, and it's so nice to ha to be able to run stuff in the background. I want to listen to Pandora. Hey, I got Pandora on in the background, and I'm off doing something else. You know, I'm, I'm you know browsing or whatever, or or uh, and and being able to flip between apps really fast. Uh, Android just has that down. I, I think they're really kind of dropping the ball on that in a big way. Notification, Jamie, being able to think? get well, they they got notifications. Damien? Damien, what it, is Damien still there? What was, yeah, I'm still here. What was the question? Okay. Uh, what do you think of the lack of multitasking? Is it is it as big an issue as people have made it out to be? Yes, it is. 
but I think it'll be addressed in three days and released in three months. <laughs> Adam, how about you? I, I mean, I think that with multitasking, one of the things that is often lost is that we have this single word for a whole bunch of different concepts. And when you say multitasking, you don't really necessarily mean give me full preemptive multitasking with multiple apps showing multiple interfaces simultaneously. You know, you have to separate out what you want. Do you want something more like notifications? Do you want apps to be able to put up alarms? I mean, the iPhone OS can do all this. Apple's apps do it. The question is, will Apple open it up to third parties, and if so, how and when? I mean, when people talk about wanting multiple apps running simultaneously, the two big ones are really Pandora, because iTunes or you know, the iPod app isn't what everyone wants to listen to all the time, for obvious reasons, and GPS apps, where you want something to be going on all the time in the background without really paying attention to it. There's really not a ton of other things where people are saying, oh, I've just got to have this outside of those two kind of examples. So I think the reason we haven't seen it so far is that Apple is thinking very carefully about what's going on and, and sort of how to do it without... Um, while still making sense. So, you know, again, yeah, people are commenting about instant messaging and voice over IP. It's the same thing. Apple does that already, and people want third parties to be able to have access to it as well. So, you know, it's just a matter of Apple making sure that everyone else can get access to that functionality in a way that doesn't hurt the user experience overall. Agreed. So, Damien, you feel that uh, the event on Thursday, they're going to announce some, some form of multitasking? Um, my guess is that they are. I mean, we still, we're still we still about four years behind the curve on instant messaging. I mean, you can't run a background instant messenger. The whole push thing just doesn't work. And um, I've installed, I've bought every $10 app with push. It, it just won't keep me logged in doing instant messaging, and my, my danger phone from 10 years ago did. Um, I'm hoping they address it. I'm imagining they are because what Apple normally does is around... April, they make an announcement that then causes everyone not to buy anything till July. So this is their chance to go, well, that thing you really wanted, it's coming. And then everyone, there'll be this nice painful period for all the other t cell phone manufacturers. Well, everyone waits till July, and then July, August to see how well it fulfilled their expectations. So Apple's, Apple's going to do something major this Thursday. Uh, I think they're also going to address the file system issue. I don't have inside data on it. It just... Just my Apple intuition is like, okay, you know, eventually they're going to go, okay, you know, we know. But um, as an engineer, the the fact that this thing gets 10, 11 hours of battery life is important to me. And I'm almost willing to go, you know what, it, it, this thing is an appliance. It isn't, I mean, I, I've had netbooks. I've had every, all kinds of little um, laptop-y things. And after two and a half hours, they, because they have small batteries, they stop working. So every device I've ever had, if it can't stay with you, you know, it, 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 you know, if it's like this, this, this sick, injured little laptop that can't go the distance with you, then it stays home, and this gadget it goes the distance with you. So I mean, that's 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 why I'm. Oh, it's going to kill Netflix. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I'm not, you know, given does the device turn on, does it multitask? Yeah, I'll take turns on. So that, that, that's sort of my viewpoint on it. Sure. Adam X, what do you One think? One thing that actually I wanted to note Thursday. that I was quite surprised by after having the iPad running all day long as a picture frame or in use or whatnot is that it doesn't get hot. That, oh, yeah. you know, my MacBook is kind of uncomfortable after no time at all. But right. it's just yep. cool as a cucumber, and that's really pretty neat. It's an ARM processor. It's a totally different architecture. Yeah, I was impressed by that. Yeah, when you think about it, right, the sheer... Yeah, when you think about it, right, the... Uh, Jamie, go ahead. If you, it's six times, we were measuring it out in, in terms of iPhones, and it actually fits six iPhones across. So it's six iPhones large, and uh, if the iPhone is a unit of measurement now. And um, if you said, okay, I'm going to make an iPod Touch six times as big, or six, time, six iPhones, what could you give me? Well, you'd have you know, lots of batteries, and you'd be able to put a more powerful ARM processor, and they've done that. I, I swear the web browsing on my iPad is yeah. faster than my MacBook Pro. 
it's, it, there's no question. And and you get to see more of the page. It's 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 really good. And I left it around this weekend, and all sorts of random relatives of mine. I came back, and this web browsing history was huge. Everyone was basically, you know, it's the it's the Wikipedia appliance. <laughs> One thing that I found interesting about the web browsing. Um, is that, I mean, you're used to needing to, to on the iPhone, zoom in, double tap to zoom in, because it's the only way to read some of the smaller columns. But on the iPad, you don't have to do it, but you can, which is a great way of decluttering some web pages. You know, just show me the main text column and nothing else. And it, and it, and it gives you that um, minority report style feel. When you, when you zoom in, it's, it's on, on, on an iPhone, you're pinch zooming, and yeah. with with the iPad, you you could use two right. hands, and it's it's interesting. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. The uh, the photo app on on the iPad is really pretty impressive. I mean, I didn't realize how robust that process could be. You know, I mean, it's it's given new life to uh, the photos that I actually had on my my iPod. Um, you know, it's sort of along those lines. A question that came in from the from the uh, chat window. How do you foresee uh, the iPad transforming content consumption and publishing? Um, I'll start with Adam Flaherty. Do you have any thoughts in that regard? Um, consumption? Uh, can you repeat yeah. the question? <laughs> Basically, how do you think it's going to? Right. How do you think it's going to influence the way that people consume content? Uh, there's two questions. So there's that. Oh God. Yeah. Um, well. I think uh, well, you have you have your your phone, um, you have your your laptop, and then you have your TV at home. I think it's going to change the way people publish. Um, people are going to think twice about the content they put out there. You know, you can, you know, they may be able to make a buck off of it. You know, um, I think that it's going to it'll change the landscape of the web. Uh, people will format their pages differently. To be, you know, viewed on it. Um, I think that um, it's going to change textbooks. Um, you know, for education, it's it's like it's perfect. It's the perfect textbook. It's the ultimate textbook for kids. Um, you'll, I think, change the way you watch television or movies because of it. Um, I mean, you have this big giant remote. Um, you can watch Netflix right now, and you could. Uh, it's it, it'll definitely change the way you interact with books, movies, and music. Um, it'll make your it'll make your music collection um, a lot more interesting. You'll be able to see cover art now. You know, um, you'll uh, yeah. I, I think it'll it'll change the, you know the 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 very nature uh, of the way you consume your media, and 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 publish it too. One of the things, uh, I mean, speaking as a publisher, um, we're really really intrigued by the the iPad. Um, almost not so much because of the iPad itself, but because of the iBookstore. That. Uh, Tim O'Reilly has often said in relation to uh, to pirating of content that obscurity is more of a problem, and he's absolutely right. That that the real problem that everyone but you know Dan Brown and J.K. Rowling have is not being known, and so I think. Think what? Yeah, I think we just lost him. <laughs> Well, well uh, Jamie, let's hand that over to you. What what do you think uh, uh, the iPad will do both for content consumers and for people who are, are publishing? So, uh, yeah, and I wanted to take this because there was actually a question we got. Um, one was on how it's going to transform publishing, and another one was whether you should publish as an ebook or an app. Um, I think right. you've got a significant platform, and what Apple has done to a lot of industries is makes them like records. So they've taken apps and made it so it's a hits and misses kind of stuff. If you're sad about that, it can be very frustrating because you could you could be a moderate shareware developer and now it's sort of like all or nothing. You're either making a quarter million dollars this year or you're still only making a hundred bucks. So 
But the chances for notoriety, the chances that these tastemakers are going to put you on the iPad is higher. Um, Apple made it so that instantaneously you go buy any song, that reasonable current popular song. And I know all my um, all my indie kind of rock um, acquaintances in LA, um, they're on iTunes, but they only make seven cents. And then they have their CD baby, and then they can make more money on other areas. So I think in terms of discovery, it's going to be necessary to be in the iStore, whatever it is, whether it's the iBook store, the App Store, et cetera. And that's going to be a shared marketing promo expense. If you hit it, then that's going to be where you make your money. Otherwise, it's just going to be a necessary act of marketing. And, and then you can split the two hats. And a lot of people go, I'm never going to make money in the App Store. It's like, fine. But if you're, if you're like the 15th book and when it's still novel – that does interactive books and pushes the envelope, then you're going to be in great shape. Um, and so I think the way it's going to transform publishing is exactly what Adam was talking about, is discovery, discovering new content. And I think um, you know, people were asking you know, 15 years ago, oh, I need a website. Do you know what a website is? No, but I need one. Um, about three years ago, people realized, I need a mobile app. Why do you need a mobile app? I don't know. And, and mobile apps are the new web. Well, having an iPad app, having an iPhone app, or having a pre-app or an Android app, that is the new, quote, website. And so it's going to become a necessary part of any kind of marketing strategy, whether, whether your content is the app itself or whether the app is just a way to interact with your brand or content, um, getting a foothold, getting a location on this device. And the fact that it puts this store in front of everyone is so significant. This gadget made audio instantaneous, uh, you know, uh, podcasts yes. that you could buy any music. But this oh. is going to, there's going to, I mean, there's 40 million of these out there, 40 million phones and devices. And that's phones. That's not even counting the touches. And then this, once they move millions and millions, now you've got an audience who can instantly give you tens of dollars as opposed to dollars. And so it, it's incredibly significant. And the, the hits and misses meta, uh, analogy works because once people find out about an artist, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a, uh, you know, Tuft and his books on, you know, how to do beautiful book writing, once they find one of them, they're going to go on eBay, Amazon, whatever, buy the rest of the catalog. So people will find the artist. And now the artist doesn't just say music. It can be movies. It can be books. And they're going to find that artist, and then they're going to do the standard things that a fan does. I want to buy the rest of the stuff by this guy, and you know, repeat rents. Adam, it looks like we have we got you back there. Yeah. Uh, do you want to uh, finish up your thought on on that? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, as I was just saying in the comments, uh, you know, that's the problem with Flash is sometimes it just kills you. But <laughs> the the thing that I was going to say that that I think is interesting about the iPad, and I'm not really seeing other people doing this, but it's going to be a large chunk of how we see it, is as yet another mechanism for people to read the same books. That we're going for format and device independence um, mediated through our website. Basically, the idea is is you'll be able to hopefully be able to buy one of our books in any form and then read it anywhere else without it being a problem because too many times I think we get into these situations where you're locked into something funny because well you know you bought the print versions now you can't have the PDF or you bought the PDF now you can't have the iPhone version and, and the iPad obviously doesn't change that but it, but it makes it clear that people are going to want their content which they feel that they own um, it's not a license deal they're going to want it wherever they want it and and publishers are going to have to deal with that you know it's you know saying oh buy it again is not going to be a great answer but i think buy an enhanced copy is and that's a standard yes, marketing that may that may be in any industry and um, you know I, I, the other day, as soon as I got the iPad, there was a Dr. Seuss book. And I'm like, I already have Dr. Seuss's ABCs. I have Dr. Seuss's ABCs for my kids um, in hardcover. I have it as a Mac title. And now I have it as an iPad title. Am I disgruntled? No, I spent three bucks. And now when my kids are waiting somewhere, they're going to run it. And it has, it has voiceovers, and you click the things, and it's interactive. And, uh, you know, Dr. Seuss was a fantastic artist. So his wife's still alive. She's getting revenue from this stuff. I have no problem exchanging again and again and again for the content as long as they don't just give me the exact same content 
and they create a richer experience. Um, you know, I saw Paul McCartney the other day, and he, he repackaged the Beatles and and his music, and et cetera, et cetera. And it's like it's a new product, it's a new experience with that content. And I think the iPad gives you brand new experiences with some older content. Um, if anyone hasn't downloaded Elements, um, you know the Wolfram Alpha. It, uh, it, the Elements is 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 got music. It's got 3D interactive um, items. It's a coffee table book that is. It's a coffee table book that is um, been converted into a fully interactive iPhone or iPad app. And I was actually pitching some books to O'Reilly, and O'Reilly kept going. The coffee table books are really expensive. They're all color and they're heavy, and we don't know about the profit margin. Now I can take that whole series, do it as an iPad book, and then get the coffee table um, version printed with no problem. Once I've got a platform of people who've already gotten it, so I can take that content and get it in the market. Um, I've still got to get a book deal and all this stuff, but now I don't have to consider who's going to bankroll a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars worth of Chinese uh, print. Yeah, but <laughs> again, speaking as a publisher, doing Go interactive ahead. books and getting video in books and getting programming in books is hard and it's expensive and the people yeah. who can usually write books usually can't do the same stuff. So we're moving so far from, you know, the the writer as an artist and the unheated garret who can just write a book on their own. We're tr we're creating this situation where a book becomes a team programming effort. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I do believe that we 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 aren't going to completely rethink our concept of books simply because that team programming effort is going to give you something different than what the one person um, working maybe with an editor, maybe not even with an editor, um, you know, to a certain extent, is going to create out of their own head. And there's going to be room for both. And, you know, it's, it, it's and either is right or wrong, but, uh, but I do think that, you know, books as we know them are not going away, even if the formats and the, mach and the devices upon which we read them are going to change somewhat. But I think the tools will get better, and the iMovie of interactive ebooks will exist. That's the publishing tools. Yeah, the tools. So an artist. I, you know, you I, just need an artist. Artists are free. <laughs> artists, are free. <laughs> artists aren't free. I mean, no, I mean, yeah, they are. I live in Los Angeles, man. They are free. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely free. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I listen. Starbucks. We don't have dog commerce here. We have writers. And artists. <laughs> you know, Dire Straits was saying this years ago, you know, money for nothing and chicks for free, but it just didn't happen there either. So, um, the, the, uh, no, the, the problem that I see is, is that, again, so much of this stuff is really actually not down to tools. The tools are there and they are good and they're getting better all the time. But having someone who knows how to think in video or think graphically um, and can then communicate that with someone who can think in text actually is really kind of difficult. I mean, it's it's non-trivial, which is why there are relatively few really good interactive book projects out there, or, or really good big you know graphical um, books out. But if you go if you go back to the ebook that I'm talking about, it, it, it's not video intensive. It just has 3D objects. It has text. And it has it has gorgeous artwork. It's kind of like a DK book that you might find with with really nice illustrations. It's got one song at the beginning, but it's not a big video production. In fact, when I wrote my first book on internet video, I hired professional artists to do all my illustrations. I have them all in Illustrator EPS files, and it would be trivial for me to include them in large scalable format. I'm actually talking to my first publisher. It's kind of like, you know, oh, I guess we could, but um, that talent is totally enough that you could do a full interactive book with the assets I already have. So there's no new assets. It's just layout. That's a couple grand. So I'm just saying, assuming you're not, yeah, the, the jump to video is a bigger jump. Um, yeah. But I'm telling you, any kind of reasonable interactive book is far easier than an indie film and, and, yeah. and probably more profitable if you get any kind of audience. So All right, uh, know, guys, it, it, guys we've got easier. about, we've got just about a minute left. Um, there were a couple questions that came in. One of them was, and it's a big question for a lot of people, should they wait for iPad 2.0 to come out before jumping on the bandwagon? Adam Flaherty, what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, no. Go out and get one right now. <laughs> really. You'll, 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 yeah. Adam Eggs? 
I, the the only thing I can say is you should not buy an iPad now because you expect it will be useful or make your life easier or make you more productive or something like that. If you're buying an if you want an iPad now, you should buy it now because it's mind-bogglingly cool. If you think, "Oh, but the next version will have yes, the next version will be better and then you can wait." So, you know, if you're if you're if you're dithering, yeah, fine, wait, whatever, it doesn't matter, but if if you want it you want it now, and you're not going to really suffer in any way for buying now. Right. Damien, how about you? What do you think? You can always Craigslist this one when you get your <laughs> next one in a month. And then when the next one comes out, you Oh, no, that's, that of course. That's what I do. Of course, You either hand it down or you Craigslist it. I, you know, I'm a day and date kind of guy, because um, I'm a geek, but um, it's... it's um, you know, we're we're all going to be making interactive content, so you need to go buy one now because we need our audience, right? Right, right. Um, no, I, I think it's right. I think it's well, that's, completely something. If you, you want one, go get one. Don't wait. Yeah. I so that's really uh, all now. the time that we've got. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's all the time. <laughs> that's all the time that we've got uh, for today, guys. Thank you very much for for taking part in this. Um, thanks for everybody. Uh, stopping by and, and listening to us chat about it. Uh, if you're interested in more iPod, iPad content, not iPod content, iPad content, uh, check out O'Reilly.com slash iPad. We're, we're updating that daily. So thanks again to everybody, and we will see you soon. Thank you, guys. I just want to say quickly, I want to ask our attendees, if you have a chance when you leave this meeting, please take our post-event survey to give us some feedback. We'd like to know what we can do to improve this and make it better for you in the future. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Bye-bye.